Hello everyone, and welcome to another beer review. Now, <clears throat> today we're back on the Scottish series. Woo hoo 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 hoo. How marvellous. Now, this is the second last beer in the Scottish series. I've kept a supposedly a good one. Supposedly a good one. Going by what other people are, are saying about it. But I've kept this as for last, this good one. So what we're on to today is Hoppiness India Pale Ale. Marvellous, isn't it? And oh God, they're spilling the back and everything. Oh, it's a textured label. It's textured. I do like a textured label. Smooth with the little lumpy bits. Mm, right. And uh, yes, it's 5%. It's 500 ml bottle. I can't remember. I think it was roughly about £2, slightly over £2, I think it was. And of course, it's produced, it's a product of Scotland by the Loch Ness Brewery, Dalfamer Estate, Aviemore. Loch Ness, Aviemore. Aviemore's a fair distance. From uh, from Loch Ness and Inverness, so it's because uh, Abbey Bow's just basically right down at the base of the Cairn Gardens. Um, basically, just did the kind of slightly ski resort right next to Loch Mullach. So I think they're kind of ripping the piss thing, you know, associated by the Loch Ness Brewery. It's absolutely nowhere near fucking Loch Ness, you know. <laughs> It's like that's turning around and saying, hey, Exeter, make wind of you. <laughs> no fuck, <fart>, seriously. <laughs> uh, it started already, even just with the name of the bloody brewery, you think, you don't have a fucking near lot next. But anyway, Aviemore, seriously. I'm trying to think where the brewery would be in Aviemore. Well, it's Dolphamer, isn't it? Estate, so it's in the estate, that's probably why. Because I used to, I had relations up near Aviemore and Dulnane Bridge and... Uh, Grant and Spey and uh, all that kind of, all these kind of areas. I used to spend quite a lot of time there as a, as a kid in the summer up there causing trouble and just being an absolute arsehole. Great times, great times. And uh, so I know the area really quite well. Um, and unfortunately the area knows me quite well as well. Bad reputation. But anyway, there's some spiel in the back. Let's have a wee carry on with this. A full-on USA hop explosion with Columbus, Willamette, Galaxy and Citra combining beautifully with clear Highland water. <laughs> I'm reading that thinking, you know, more, some people will be like, oh, yes, and I'm going like, oh God, <laughs> you know, it's just shows you the yin and yang of the beer world. And... Uh, Hints of bright gold with pine and citrus. Oh, there's that a pine. I do like I do like the taste of pine. I like the, I like the taste of disinfectant. I do like I like that smell of disinfectant in my beer. And little hints of toilet cleaner. I do love that. Because that's what beer needs. You know? You want that kind of pine kind of smell. You want that cheap disinfectant smell. <sighs> Citrus aromas and flavours balance with a malty sweetness. Well, this is a thing. If your malty sweetness isn't there to balance out the bitterness and the sourness of all these hops, then, then you're going to have an imbalanced beer and I'm going to fucking trash it. If it's badly brewed and it's not balanced, I will tear it a new arsehole. I really will. You can fuck your hops, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't mind hops and beer at all. But there's got to be a balance, there's got to be a bit of kind of a, a, a bit of common sense to the process, rather than let's go gun the hole, you know. So apparently vast and unfallible, vast and unfallible, oh my god you're talking about Loch Ness and not the fucking beer. But apparently it's vast and unfathomable. Loch Ness has long held its reputation as a dark mysterious stretch of water Blessed with the mythical healing powers and home of the world's most infamous monster, Nessie. Uh, it isn't. There's no such thing as Loch Ness, monster, Nessie, and all that. It's all built with fucking <coughs> arrows. 
it's all nonsense. So it's all just hiding bullshit. But anyway, it's all missing bollocks, just like craft beer. At Loch Ness Brewery, which is nowhere near Loch Ness because it's in the air anymore, we harness clear Highland water to brew our award-winning ales to enjoy a free thinkers, to enjoy by free thinkers and beer drinkers at free thinkers and beer drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> never, the problem is I would never turn around and say craft beer drinkers are free thinkers. I see them more like sheep. I mean, because they're all basically sitting there. It's like a kind of hipster movement to a certain degree. They're all sitting there with tattoos, beards, you know, long beards, and kind of long hair. Or, it's either it could be long hair or it could be really short, well, kind of trimmed hair. But they all kind of look kind of similar. They all like their tattoos and everything else. They all want to kind of... Uh, be part of somebody's tribe, you know, but, but, but pretend they're individualistic and all this type of stuff. And you think, oh, free thinkers. No, sheep. Mm-hmm. Type of ones that like, like mixing brown shoes with blue suits, that type of stuff, you know, blue suit, blue trousers, gotta be brown shoes, gotta be brown shoes. <laughs> it's, it's a given, you know. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway. <laughs> That's what you get with it, but yeah, free thinkers. <laughs> free thinkers. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, that's a good one. That, that's kind of break me up for this one. If the beer turns out crap, at least it's a bit worth it for that. <laughs> free thinkers. <laughs> uh, coming from a brewery that calls itself Loch Ness and it's down near Aviemore. Further down the U9. <laughs> But anyway, I suppose I better crack this open. But have I done that? There we go. Right. Let's crack that open and see what it's like. Oh, cricket's fucking lively. Bastards. <laughs> well, the beer's got a bit of life anyway. If the free thinking beer drinkers don't. Jesus, it's over the fucking floor and everything. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, it's a bit misty. Mm, yeah, right. Pretty misty for me. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, right, so here we go. And that's, that's just a thing when they say that like Highland water. Well, I would say, especially with a lot of the kind of natural water around about Aviemore, it's quite peaty. So it is. So it's quite brown. If you actually even look at any of the rivers and the lochs, they're quite dark in colour because of the peats kind of discolouring the water. So when they try to say, well, crystal clear, well, it's not really, no. But anyway, as you can see, it's for people on the podcast, it's about a one and a half finger head. It's uh, kind of a slightly darker golden colour. So it is not amberish, but uh, it's more towards amber than it is towards kind of uh, kind of straw coloured, so it's, it's quite a dark gold, and uh, there's a slight cloudiness to it. Not completely hazy or anything like that. No, 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 no. But then there's a little slight kind of mist to it, so it's not completely clear, it's not crystal clear. So what does it smell of? Now they did say Columbus. Well, a minute. Galaxy and Citra. Oh. I'm struggling. I am struggling. A little, I, I would say a really, really little accent of grapefruit. Maybe a bit of pine needles, but that's it. But it's so light. I mean, you've really got to go searching for it. In fact, for any aroma, you've got to go searching for it. I can't even smell any malt or anything like that or grain. Just very, very light in the aroma. I just did a, a lager there, and uh, Jesus, the lager had a lot more aroma than this. The lager had bags of aroma compared to this. This is really lacking in aroma. So there you go. So let's taste it and see what it's going to say. 
Second Lance Beer of the Scottish Series so far, but we will have a good kind of break from the Scottish Series, although I am up in Scotland in October, so I'm looking to maybe get um, some beers that I couldn't get the last time I was up, especially with the Iron, Iron Brewery, so I'm looking to try and get some more of their products and some other ones as well, just to see um, and things like that. So, but anyway, let's see what it tastes like. Oh, God, it's lacking. It does not it taste like. It tastes like an IPA that's been watered down. That, as if, like, you know, every flavour's kind of muted. You know, you drink the volume and it's sitting, you know, normally at, at seven or eight. Some buggers turned it down to about three or four. And you're like, well, I can hear it and kind of make out you know, what's playing, but I'm not really getting all the things and it's just not strong enough. And, you know, the volume just isn't there. And that's what it feels like for the flavour wise, the volume just has been turned right down and you get a gist, but you're not really getting the vibe or anything else. And it's just not convincing. It's like going to a party with the, basically you know, the music's turned down and you can hear everybody's conversation. You're thinking, no, it should be wrapped up and I should be able to hear the music over my conversation and I shouldn't be able to hear other people's conversations in their groups. But it's like the opposite. And it's like... Mmm. It's actually... Some of the flavours are actually not too bad. But I was expecting, with the amount of hops that we're seeing and everything else, I expected it to have a lot more flavours and a lot, kind of, certain flavours being a lot stronger than what they really are. But the thing that stands out is actually more the kind of standard ale flavours than the kind of hoppier, more IPA kind of flavours. And I'm talking about kind of more craft IPA. There's a bit of pithy sourness in the aftertaste. But it's not strong and it doesn't linger. It's very weak. As if like they've tried to, but they've been frightened. You know, it's like, well, I should put some more in. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want it to be undrinkable. I don't want it to be crazy. And they're just like, they've undersold it. You know, it's like, well, how does it taste? Is it, is it too hoppy? Probably the person that says, I don't taste bloody hops at all, really. I know they're there, There's the accents are there, but the accents come and you think, well, here comes the main flavours will be coming, and no, they just don't get past the kind of accent stage. Very muted, very muted in the, the flavour. Body's not too bad, mouth feels not too bad, but... Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something that's really citrusy and oh well, that kind of pizzazz, this is going to disappoint you. All the, the free thinkers and the, the kind of uh, weird beer drinkers will be disappointed with this. Yeah, very kind of dialed down and reserved. Mm. It's saying that, it's actually not too bad. Um, I would expect it to have disliked this beer a bit more, going by how it was kind of uh, of the bump and the, the pish on the label, thinking, oh no, there we go again, another IPA or such a seed or anything else. And of course, you can just feel blind, it's completely different from all the rest. Mm. But anyway. Well, I'm going to try and break down these flavours because uh, there's not many that are really standing out. So.
you know. She sat off the most very light, very light in the front of the mouth. To the point is I'm struggling to even that, you know, taste drain in the front of the mouth. A little bit of sweetness there, not too much. It's, I would refer to this as more of a savoury beer rather than a... The, the underlying sweetness is very light and doesn't hang about long. So there's not much of a sweetness there. But the malt's very light. Grain is almost non-existent. But just as it starts to kind of move from the front of the mouth to the mid-tongue, you are starting to get a little light kind of pine accent. And uh, by this point, as you can't really pick up any sweetness in the mid tongue now because you get a little bit of citrus, a little bit of pine, um, a little bit of malt. Again, I'm not really, I mean, I know the grain's there because there's a bit of body to the mid tongue, so there's a bit of body to it, but it's not giving me any kind of grain flavours, but it is obviously providing a bit of body to the mid tongue. But yes, the kind of Three main flavours, but I'm talking about they are very light. Um, is the malt, little accents of pine, little accents of citrus, and uh, moves on to the aftertaste. And you move on to the aftertaste, and it just Everything dissipates quite quickly. There's a little bit of sourness in the aftertaste, but it comes in late. This is a strange thing. You've swallowed, and then you start getting this kind of bit of sourness at the back of the throat, but it's a bit of a delayed reaction. You, you've swallowed it maybe about a second, a second and a half, and you start getting a little bit of sourness in the back of the throat. So everything dissipates very quickly. The, the, they never grow into proper flavours, so you, you still get a little bit of accent of pine and citrus, a little bit of malt, but they all dissipate quite quickly. And uh, like I say, it dissipates quickly, you swallow it, and then you start getting a little bit of kind of accent sourness at the, the back of the tongue, in the back of the throat, and that's it. There's no bitterness on the roof of the mouth from that. Kind of uh, respect, so yeah, so it's all kind of pithy, very light, pithy sourness at the back of the mouth, nothing bitterness wise on the roof of the mouth. But yeah, it's a strange one because it's not watery. This is the problem when you sometimes think. When you say that, you know, a flavour is kind of weak or very light in flavour or the flavours aren't very kind of pronounced or the volume's turned down in the flavours. A lot of times you will take that as the kind of in general, the beer's kind of weak and maybe a bit watery or whatever. There's a good example. We've done some bitters in the past where the malt's there and everything else, but it's quite dialed down. But in just general, the mouthfeel is just lacking body and just kind of a bit watery. This isn't watery. This is the thing. It's got the, in the mid tongue, it's got that kind of body that's provided by the grains. But you're not getting the flavour associated with that. And the flavours you do get are just very muted and dialed down. But it has this kind of ale body to it. And it's just a bit strange. It's got an all right mouth. Oh, it's just. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. It's like maybe a, an introduction or a starter to IPAs. So if you're, you know, it's like this is a, a good introduction or a good kind of a tester into kind of craft IPAs to see whether you, you kind of like that kind of style of beer. So it's, it's a good kind of a gauge to try as a starter to see if you are a, one of the free drinkers or free thinkers, you know. Or are you, are you normal? But yeah, um, it is a strange one. So it is a strange one. Now, what would I give this out of 10? Well, some parts are quite nice. The body's quite nice. The mouth feels quite nice. It's just the flavours 
we're throwing the kind of craft IPA bit. It's lacking all them hops there, but no, it's just the concentration just isn't there. But the thing is as well is the kind of more kind of traditional beer flavours are, are dialed down. It's quite an achievement to basically get make a beer that's actually got okay body and everything else, but all flavours, including the hoppy flavours and the kind of more traditional beer flavours like the malts, the grains and everything else, they're all kind of dialed down or completely kind of missing. And uh yeah. I don't know how the hell they managed to achieve that one. But in saying that, I don't know how they can manage to fill themselves Loch Ness when they're down near Avimo. Maybe I'm missing something. So, what would I give this out of 10? It's a strange one because it's, 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 it's kind of fine to me because I like the body of it and I like the feel of it and everything else. But and I would expect if the flavours were stronger, I would dislike it because of that. Just because I just know that it'd be imbalanced and all over the place. Whereas I can't even say it's balanced because the flavours are just kind of not there in any kind of intensity. When we're talking about all flavours, so there's a kind of an, a balance with that, that the kind of craft side flavours are not kind of overpowering the kind of more traditional ale flavours. Just they're all kind of died down and lacking intensity to the kind of same degree. Um so I really don't know. I'm gonna give this a five. So I'm gonna give it a five. A bit of a strange one. But yeah, my review, if you, if you see it about, get it and, and see what you think, see if you're getting the same off of than what I'm getting. It'd be kind of interesting to get some feedback. If anybody's tried it or if you do try it, feel free to add something to the comment and tell us what you are getting because, yeah, I just find this a bit strange. And that's why I'm giving it an average because it's lacking in flavours, so it's losing points because it's lacking in flavours and intensity. But for some strange reason, it still has the body and uh, a nice mouthfeel and everything else. And that's what it's getting the kind of marks for. So it's like, I would have expected it because of how the flavours are, I would expect it to be more watery and, and everything else and lacking in, in other areas. But it's not lacking in the areas, it's just a kind of disjointed. So it's like, we made a beer and everything's worked out from one side, which is the kind of the body mouthfeel, the conditioning, all that type of stuff. But from the flavour point of view, it's kind of, well, it's got a bit flat and it's just not really there. Um, but the accents are there to tell you what should be coming, but it just never comes. It's just, yeah, it's a very strange one. So, yeah, it's a five out of ten. It's a... Uh, 5%, it's roughly about £2 a bottle or slightly over. It's uh, the Loch Ness Brewery, near Aviemore. We went near Loch Ness. And uh, yeah, I'm not saying don't buy it, I'm not saying I'm recommending it. My view is if you do see it and you've got some spare change in your pocket, give it a go and uh, see if you're getting the same thing as I'm getting because it's just a bit of a an anomaly, in my view, and just strange. So, thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.